So this is a, uh, a short video showing my uh, first uh, Arduino project. Um, what this is is um, an engine balancer. Um, what you're looking at is a, a mock-up of an engine and the idea is to be able to determine the degree of imbalance of a flywheel um, so that you can mount uh, counter countering weights to bring it back into balance. In order to do this, the first thing is this 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 mock-up. This is essentially a mock-up uh, engine. Um, I've taken a uh, bench grinder, and on one of the wheels of the bench grinder, I've mounted a set of points. Um, the points open and close as the as the bench grinder spins. Those points drive the primary coil uh, in this uh, spark plug coil. And of course, the secondary induces a spark. There's a spark plug tape to the side down there. And from that, um, I take a small pickup, uh, which allows me to receive the, uh, the, uh, the induced current uh, off the spark plug wire. That induced current goes into this little tiny circuit, which allows me to convert the, um, um, the impulse of the spark into a nice little square wave. Essentially, it just uses a 5-5 timer as a uh, one-shot. And uh, the output of that then goes into um, one of the input pins uh, on the Arduino here, uh, which is configured as an interrupt pin. So that allows my Arduino to uh, measure the RPM and the position of the wheel. The next thing we need is we need to know the acceleration. And mounted here on top is a little SparkFun accelerometer. That's a three-axis accelerometer. I'm only using the x-axis. So I've got a power and ground and uh, voltage. It's an analog accelerometer and the voltage is coming down here and into my Arduino into the A0, so the analog zero pin on the Arduino. So I have two signal inputs. I have an acceleration input. I have a spark, essentially position input. And then I have a little liquid crystal display here wired up just according to the standard liquid crystal library. Very easy to use. The display shows me the um, the current, sort of the instantaneous RPM, the angle of the uh, imbalance with respect to the uh, uh, zero position of the flywheel, and also the inches per second, which is a measure of acceleration. I'll walk through the code in a few minutes. And then there's a, also a running best estimate. So the, the, the upper line shows the instantaneous value, and the second line here shows the uh, sort of a uh, a weighted uh, running average. So let's uh, spin this up and see how it works. Oh, um, here on my uh, um, oscilloscope, the uh, upper trace is showing the analog uh, output of the accelerometer. So that just shows a sort of a, a nice uh, sine wave. Um, the second uh, trace is the uh, um, uh, square wave, which is the uh, interrupt input to the Arduino. So what you'll see is a square wave on the bottom and a sine wave on the top, and actually the relative phase difference between the two should correspond to the, the position of the weight, or the imbalance weight on the wheel. Now you can see on my flywheel here, I've marked it in terms of uh, angles. So the zero position is sort of right here, and then at a position 270, I've placed a, a little extra weight. So what we should see is about a 270 degree phase difference here on the oscilloscope, and uh, if the software is working properly and the hardware is working properly, the liquid crystal will show uh, 270 degrees uh, plus or minus a little bit. So let's spin this up, see what happens, and um, I'll get back in a minute and we'll talk about the, uh, the code. That seems to have worked. It's showing 271 degrees, uh, uh, 0.169 uh, uh, inch seconds, inches per second, and an RPM of uh, 3,526, which is all about right. All right. So this is the um, this is the Arduino code. We'll take a quick look at the, the interrupt service routine. The interrupt service routine 
essentially is just keeping track of when was the um, last interrupt time in terms of uh, uh, microseconds. So it uses the internal clock in your Arduino to keep track of when did the last interrupt occur. And really all I'm doing in here is trying to compute an RPM and the uh, time between the current spark and the previous spark. So, so that allows me to, to compute a frequency and, and an RPM. The rest of this stuff is just debouncing. I'm looking for sparks, that, I'm looking for interrupts that are happening too frequently or too infrequently and invalidating them. Um, so that's all happening in the background. And now, in order to, to um, grab the acceleration data, I have a polling loop. And this polling function, what it does is it runs for some number of, uh, some number of milliseconds. Normally, I run it for about four seconds. And during those four seconds, I just continuously read the analog um, input from the uh, accelerometer. And the trick is I'm trying to read that value and assign it to a bin. Right? I have uh, 120 bins. Each bin corresponds to a couple of degrees of acceleration data. Um, and so, uh, or about three degrees worth of acceleration data. And so I need to figure out for a given uh, read of the accelerometer which of the bins this position, this acceleration should be going to. I'm, I'm also actually averaging them. So in order to do that, I just need to know when was the last interrupt relative to the current time and um, how many bins I've got. And from that, I can figure out the uh, the actual bin. There's also a small correction factor here that allows me to shift it, do a little bit of time shifting because the accelerometer takes a, a couple of sec, a couple of um, uh, milliseconds to actually uh, um, do the sa to produce the uh, the proper value. There's a, there's a slight lag even with the uh, the analog accelerometer. So uh, then we have um, a discrete Fourier transform. This um, will uh, compute for any one of the harmonics what is the uh, amplitude and the angle of that harmonic with respect to my sample. So you just pass it that vector that I showed you, uh, ask it for one of the harmonics, and you'll get the, uh, the amplitude and the angle of, of that harmonic out. Uh, this is the, uh, these are some characters that I've uh, drawn uh, using the uh, liquid crystal display, I have a couple of extra character types that I've drawn to show the uh, uh, inches per second. I think you can you can see it here, the IS, the degree sign, and the RPM, which I'm uh, drawing there. Now if we continue on down, so this is the liquid crystal update. Uh, this code here is really just updating the liquid crystal, but it's also keeping track of um, what is a best estimate rather than trying to only display instantaneous values. So there's a little bit of logic here to keep track of how often I've shown a particular value plus or minus 10%. Um, and, um, uh, and then to uh, update a best estimate uh, on the second LCD line. This is the uh, workhorse loop um, with a bunch of counters. They get reset each time, attach the interrupts, run the polling loop for 4,000 seconds, and then uh, detach the interrupts, and then do the discrete Fourier transform. Here I do the discrete Fourier transform over two uh, frequencies. The first frequency is D the DC, essentially uh, no frequency, so that's the DC offset. What that'll do is that'll give me the 1G acceleration value from the, um, extract the 1G acceleration from the, from the signal. Um, and then the first harmonic is the harmonic that corresponds to the RPM of the engine. I'm not interested in the subharmonics, the uh, smaller frequencies because uh, we can't correct those by mounting weights on the flywheel anyway, so there's not much point. Compute the angle, um, compute the acceleration in terms of g, um, the frequency and the velocity, um, and then update the LCD. And that's really all there is to it. There's a you know, bunch of debugging down here. In terms of setup, um, you know, here I'm saying what is my um, uh, internal voltage reference for the uh, uh, analog to digital conversion. I'm using the 2.56 internal voltage reference because uh, I'm only really getting one and a few, one and a bit G out of the accelerometer. It, even with a fair amount of vibration, um, you don't get a lot of G. Um, um, interrupt pin and then LCD. Configure the LCD. 
can create my LCD characters and um, then the Arduino will immediately start the, uh, the polling loop uh, forever and uh, there you go anyway I'll be uh, making updates to this probably putting it up on GitHub and uh, people uh, by all means let me know what you think if you find any bugs let me know and I'll be uh, trying to make uh, better and more accurate versions of this and probably experimenting with the digital accelerometer and um, maybe an optical input instead of a, a spark-based input and uh, mounting this on a real engine and seeing how it works.